Okay, we are going to close the book, not close the book, but close the book on learning new stuff about evaluating limits anyway. This is the final chapter. So we've evaluated limits a bunch of ways, not a whole lot recently. We did a ton of this in unit one. We did a lot of algebra. We looked at graphs, we looked at tables. We did all kinds of things. This is the final chapter in evaluating limits and it's called L'Hopital's Rule. So the first thing that I want you to be thinking about is how do you say that? And that is a proper name. So let's make sure we get a proper name correct. You don't want L'Hopital to start saying your name wrong. Uh, he was French, I believe, and it was a he. Pretty sure he was also white, but that's neither here nor there. So L'Hopital, sometimes it's called L'Hopital, but they'll use an OS without the special indicator there. Both are correct because when you translate sounds from certain languages into English, there's no direct translation. So this is one of those where we say L'Hopital. It looks like it's spelled Las, La Hospital, but we say L'Hopital because we get the name right. It's enough repetitions of that. So L'Hopital's rule was something that this guy wrote a paper on and it's a way to evaluate limits that incorporates some of the things we've been studying in calculus. But first things first, we want to take a look at a little bit of an understanding of why this works. I'll let you get that written down. That's the limit as x approaches pi of tangent of x divided by sine of x. So we know from our study of math, quite a few things are true. One thing is true is the thing I'm writing down. Another thing that's true is if we let x approach pi we would use substitution here and the sine of pi, that's zero. The tangent of pi is also zero. So we get zero divided by zero, which we remember from our study in earlier in calculus, meant we had to do some more work. So we might've done something like this. We might've noticed that tangent is sine of X divided by cosine of X. And furthermore, we can multiply by the reciprocal of sine of X. And we have the limit as x approaches pi because the sine of x and the sine of x are common factors. They simplify to one. So I have one divided by cosine of x times one. So the whole limit is negative one. Okay, so we know how to do that. There's another way to do this, but in order to help reinforce what we talked about earlier in this week on linear approximation, and where this idea comes from, this idea being L'Hopital's rule, we're gonna look at the same problem in a slightly different way. So let's look at this graphically first. Okay, so pi is right about here, yeah? Right there, okay. So it makes sense. We're approaching negative one from the left and the right, got it? Okay. but that's not actually what we're gonna dwell on here. We're gonna look at tangent of X and sine of X. So that's the blue graph tangent of X. Hopefully you can see that. And the green graph sine of X. And we're gonna look at pi, okay? So these things happen to intersect at pi, right? Which is right here. And we're gonna zoom in. at their intersection point right there. 
Let's zoom in. Okay. So you already kind of see a little bit of what we we're talking about before. Now there's still some curvature, again, looking at the blue and the green, but as we zoom in more and more, and remember in the video you watched, you did the reverse, you're zooming out, take a look at what we got. When we zoom in a whole heck of a lot, we're essentially talking about two lines. And the reason why that's interesting to us is because we're talking about looking at this using the derivative. And when we studied using the derivative, what the derivative is, is the slope of the tangent line. And if I asked you for the slope of the tangent line at pi, you would be pretty comfortable right now just finding the slope of this blue line, right? That's gonna be really close to the slope of the tangent line because we're zoomed in so much, we're so very close. Same thing with the green line. So this idea of local linearity, so this idea of we can zoom in on a graph really, really closely, and so long as the graph is continuous and differentiable, we're gonna be able to look at the slopes and say, all right, this tangent line is gonna be a really accurate representation. Now, we're going to look at not the tangent line, but just the slope of the tangent line, okay? So L'Hopital's rule is a math theorem also. So what that means is we need to have specific criteria true in order to use this. This is like the intermediate value theorem. If the intermediate value theorem is looking at a function that's not continuous, we can't use it. If we're talking about taking the derivative of a function, it's got to satisfy that definition of differentiability. Continuous and the slope from the left is the same as the slope from the right. Otherwise, we can't do the things that we want to do. So L'Hopital's rule is phrased a lot of that. And informally, which is pretty much good enough for our purposes. Sorry, I couldn't remember how to spell the word indeterminate. So this is a really good informal understanding of L'Hopital's rule. So L'Hopital's rule is a method of evaluating limits and we can apply it if we get one of these indeterminate forms, zero divided by zero or some ratio of infinities, positive infinity to positive infinity, positive infinity to negative infinity, negative infinity to positive infinity or negative infinity to negative infinity. These are all things that we're used to working with. We're not used to necessarily calling these indeterminate forms. And for those of you that are like, cool, indeterminate forms, just little interesting math tidbit, there's more indeterminate forms like this one. Zero to the power of zero is also an indeterminate form that we will work with in the future. But for right now, we're focusing in on these ideas for L'Hopital's rule. So this is kind of like the hypothesis. This is the thing that must be true in order to apply L'Hopital's rule. So a more formal writing looks something like this. If we had the limit as X approaches some value, C,
and the result of that limit is this indeterminate form. Then, according to L'Hopital's rule, we are allowed to say that this is true. And this is one of the reasons why I've been hammering you on notation so much. The only thing I did was tinker with the notation a teensy bit. And one of the reasons why we don't do L'Hopital's rule right away when we're talking about derivatives is because you have very limited familiarity with the quotient rule, the chain rule, and all the other derivative stuffs that we're talking about. And when we're applying L'Hopital's rule, we want f prime divided by g prime, which is not the quotient rule. So it's going to become very hard, very complicated in your world, because you're going to start looking at quotients, and you're going to not apply the quotient rules consistently, because we've got this other thing going on in our the back of our mind. This is why it's really important we have a clear understanding of limits and situation. I'm sorry, notation and situation because we are only using L'Hopital's rule in the exact circumstance of evaluating a limit and the limit's value is one of these indeterminate forms. And then the derivative has the same, the ratio of the derivatives has the same value as the functions. And this relates to the local linearity. So when we zoom in on the function, those functions are acting like just straight lines. Now they're not straight horizontal or straight vertical lines necessarily, straight lines. And because they're acting like straight lines, we can look at the derivative of the function to still get the exact same idea because the ratio of these values is preserved. And that's what this limit is looking at is the ratio of these values. So we're not going to spend a whole heaping amount of time a little bit more French for you doing more theory than that just enough to get started. So we looked at the limit as x approaches pi of tangent of x divided by sine of x and we don't need L'Hopital's rule at all to do something like this. We just showed we could do it without that, right? Yes, we showed we could do it without it. We looked at the graph, we don't need L'Hopital's rule. Got it. But we can use L'Hopital's rule. So when we use L'Hopital's rule, we have to set up the exact circumstances, just like if we want to use the intermediate value theorem, continuity, differentiability, and the other really important math ideas we've studied. We got to set up this. So we want to look at the limit as x approaches pi of tangent of x. I've already mentioned what this is. This is 0. And we want to look at the limit as x approaches pi of sine of x. And we've already looked at this, and it's 0. So we want to do the same thing to show we have an indeterminate form. We want to look at the numerator, show that it's 0. The denominator, show that it's 0. So what we've done here is we've showed that this equals 0 divided by 0. That means we can apply L'Hopital's rule. What does it mean to apply L'Hopital's rule? We need to consider the derivative of tangent, which is secant squared, and the derivative of sine, which is cosine.
if we do the same kind of analysis, we approach pi, we could try substitution again. Cosine of pi is negative one. Nice. How about secant squared of pi? Well, before we do that, quick note mathematically, remember secant squared means secant of x and then squared. So we're talking about the secant of pi, which is the reciprocal of the cosine of pi. So what's the reciprocal of negative one? Negative one. And square that, you get one. And look, we got the same thing. I could have also, if I was feeling it here, done this a little bit differently, I could have said that this equals the limit as x approaches pi. I have one divided by cosine squared of x, that's the numerator. The denominator's reciprocal is one divided by cosine of x, so I have cosine cubed of x. So this is just me reminding you that there's multiple ways to do this. I would have done this personally, but you could definitely think about it and find use in doing something like this, okay? So it seems pretty good, right? This L'Hopital's rule thing, it matches what we're expecting, but you're kind of bored with it a little bit because we don't need L'Hopital's rule to do that. There were limit problems, you'll remember, that we had a hard time dealing with that we can also use L'Hopital's rule on. So here's another, this is gonna be the limit approaching three. We have x squared minus nine in the numerator. And we have x squared minus eight x plus 15 in the denominator. And we have a bunch of ways that will work here. Like when you look at this, you probably thought about, okay, the numerator is zero. The denominator is also zero because nine minus nine is zero and nine minus 24 plus 15 is zero. So you probably thought about that. And being the wizards of math that you are, you thought about how we could factor both the numerator and denominator. The numerator would be x minus three times quantity of x plus three. The denominator would be x minus three times the quantity of x minus five. The x minus threes, yada, 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 maybe, maybe that works. Hmm, I don't know, maybe that doesn't work. Interesting. But regardless, we learned how to work with this. It does in fact factor in case you were second guessing yourself. So this equals zero divided by zero, right? Right, since this equals zero divided by zero, we can apply L'Hopital's rule. Oopsie, I almost spelled the name wrong. That would have been bad. So I spent all that time talking about L'Hopital's rule, saying his name right, spelling it right. So the derivative of x squared is 2x, the derivative of nine is zero, the denominator is 2x minus eight plus zero. You don't have to write in the plus zeros at all. Now what happens? Well, when x is three, the numerator is six. And when x is three, the denominator is negative two. We get negative three. And if we looked at the graph and did other things, we would likewise get negative three. So it works for factoring also. What about this guy? These were the ones that vexed you so. Those were really hard to do with our previous limit stuff. So that's 6x in the numerator, e to the 2x in the denominator, and we're approaching infinity. This was much harder to do in our previous understanding because we were fo forced to think about the dominant term. And it's hard to rectify dominance or make sense of dominance between 6x and e to the 2x. So like it's easy for me to say, because I've been studying math for a long time, e to the 2x is way dominant compared to 6x. 
That's easy for me to say. That's much harder for you to say. But check this out. If we look at the limit as x approaches infinity of 6x, that approaches infinity, correct? Yeah, that's a line with positive slope. The line is increasing as x is increasing, OK? And approaching infinity of e to the 2x is also infinity. That's an exponential function, which is likewise increasing as x is increasing. So we have the situation we need to apply L'Hopital's rule. We have this indeterminate form. What does that equal? I'll take care of the numerator. You handle the denominator. So we get zero. We remember to use the chain rule. 2e to the 2x is the derivative of e to the 2x. So that's pretty sweet and pretty good. And I'm just going to let you know that is the essence of L'Hopital's rule. If you can get zero divided by zero or infinity divided by infinity, you can apply L'Hopital's rule. Most of the other problems that we look at just feature slightly different algebra, but we're trying to do the same types of things. We're trying to see what these limits equal. And if we get the circumstances we're looking for, we can apply L'Hopital's rule to it. So I'll give you a little bit of time to write this one down and think about it. So I hope you definitely took time to look at this and you thought about what's going on here, and you considered the numerator as x approaches zero, 25 minus x squared minus five, that is going to be zero, because 25 minus zero is 25, squared to 25 is five, minus five is zero. Please notice that I was responsible and uh, uh, sorry, responsible about writing my limit notation. If you're groaning about writing limit notation correctly, just remember that I've written it thousands of times more than you have, and I still manage to do it every time because that is what is correct. Then we do the same thing with the denominator, also get zero. We have demonstrated that this is zero divided by zero, which means we can apply L'Hopital's rule. And when you took the derivative of the square root of 25 minus x squared, you sure as heck remembered the chain rule, didn't you? Of course you did. Two things I'd like to observe to you. The first thing is, you don't need to write the zero. I'm writing the zero because you need the reminder that when you take the derivative of something with multiple terms inside, it's a quantity that you're multiplying by. And if you don't have the parentheses, you don't have correct math. Second thing that I really wanna remind you of, because it's super easy to get lost in something like this once you use the chain rule, is you're gonna start thinking quotient rule, or are you gonna mix it up and not think the quotient rule when you have to? You have to do these things consciously thinking about why you're doing what you're doing. You need to be saying, I'm evaluating a limit. I'm using L'Hopital's rule, which is the derivative of this function divided by the derivative of this function. This is not the quotient rule. 
if I weren't evaluating a limit, maybe I would think about, I wouldn't think about the quotient rule. I would 100% be using the quotient rule. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. So this equals the limit as x approaches zero. I'm just gonna do some algebra to simplify because again, it's worth reminding ourselves how this works. And we get zero again. Sorry if you're disappointed by that. You get zero divided by five, which is still zero. Okay. So a lot of this, again, is just looking at different functions and thinking about what happens. So I'm really only going to do a couple more of these. Have a bad memory today, sorry. No, that's the wrong exponent. Should be cubed, not squared, sorry. Okay, so that's the limit as x approaches zero. From the right, numerator is e to the x minus one plus x. The denominator is x cubed. We're looking at this for a few different reasons. One of those reasons is it's got e to the x in it. And for some reason, e to the x makes you squirrely. Another reason is it's got the limit approaching just from the right. It's time we refreshed our memory that that's a thing. And the third reason you're about to find out. So some of you, I'm certain we're already working ahead and said the limit as x approaches zero from the right of e to the x minus the quantity one plus x is one minus one plus zero, that's zero, halfway home. And of course, as x approaches zero from the right of x cubed, that is also zero. So we have demonstrated that this equals zero divided by zero. Yes, no? Yeah, we've done it, nice. So we can apply L'Hopital's rule. This equals the derivative of the numerator, which is e to the x minus the quantity of zero plus one divided by three x squared. Ready, O? Are you ready for the third reason why we're looking at this example? I hope so. So again, the zero is optional. I'm doing it to show my work. Again, I wanna to communicate to you the importance of parentheses, the importance of thinking about each term. But what's really important here is check this out. The limit as x approaches zero from the right of e to the x minus the quantity of zero plus one is, wait for it. You said it yourselves in the privacy of your home. I know you did. Zero. How about the denominator? What's that gonna be? That's gonna be zero. Look, math neighbors, look what we've done. We have, again, created the circumstances where we can apply L'Hopital's rule. Look at this. So in case you're ever curious, can you apply L'Hopital's rule to the same problem more than once? Well, your answer is right here. The answer is yes. You can apply L'Hopital's rule as many times as you get an indeterminate form, like zero divided by zero. Or one of the infinities. And to reinforce that as strongly as possible, this problem actually requires another application. All right, because we get zero divided by zero again. And you're groaning and you're like, dude, do I really have to write so comma? I forgot the by. Yep, 
Yes, you do. The derivative of e to the x, once again, is e to the x. The derivative of 6x is 6. We get e to the 0, which is 1, divided by 6, which is 1 sixth. Holy cow. That right there, that was an event, wasn't it? It sure was. Hmm. Definitely last one. Now, before we do this last one together, which is the limit as x approaches zero of arc tangent of x divided by sine of x, I would like to observe to you is we've had a lot of zero divided by zero, okay? The reason why is this just happened to be the examples I found that had a really nice variety of derivatives and algebra to explore. It is perfectly fine and it's going to happen just as often probably to get infinity divided by negative infinity or something else like that. And we're still going to apply L'Hopital's rule. Let's finish up the last one you just tried. So how about it? Arc tangent of zero is that zero. Well, what is the angle measure in radians who has a tangent value of zero? So if we think about it, tangent has zero when sine is zero and cosine is not zero. So when is sine zero and cosine not zero? That happens at pi and two pi and yes, of course, zero. Mm-hmm. So the limit as x approaches zero of arc tangent of x is in fact zero. We've already talked about approaching zero and doing sine of x. That is also zero. So yes, we have in fact the criteria to apply L'Hopital's rule. What is the derivative of arc tangent of x? It is that. Now you may be curious about why did I write a one in there? Well, because it's my job to remind you of things sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes this is one of those times Remember, no matter what the function is, we can apply the chain rule, or at the very least, we should think about applying the chain rule. So if I thought about applying the chain rule here, I would have thought about how the inside function for arctangent is x and the derivative of x is one. So not applying the chain rule here doesn't cost me anything. Anyway, you're gonna get in the numerator, one divided by one plus one, and in the denominator, one. You could also clean this up a little bit. You could say that this equals the limit as x approaches zero of one divided by the quantity one plus x squared times cosine of x. That is completely unnecessary if you don't wish to. Sometimes the simplifying is necessary to evaluate a limit, but in this case, it's not. So once again, we get, oh, I think I said two. I don't know why I said two. That was silly. One plus zero is one times one is it's one. Done and done. So L'Hopital's rule, quick recapitulation. Sometimes can be used on, pro I'm sorry. 
Yes, sometimes can be used on problems we've done before. Can only be done on problems or limit expressions that have one of these indeterminate forms. And finally, can be used multiple times on the same limit statement.